Welcome back to the Constant Pursuit Podcast. I'm your host, Stanley Chalk, and today we talk with Jason Lyantara about culture and the hierarchy of Indonesia. We also talk about the struggles of loneliness in America and how curiosity always leads to new experiences. This is a good episode. Let's get right to the episode. Right, Jason, thank you so much for joining me today. How's, how's everything going with you? Wow, everything is amazing. You know, like I'm in Tahoe right now. It's really pretty here during summer forget about the winter you know but thank <laughs> is it God hot is it hot in already. is it hot in tahoe right now oh no man it's, it's like like i think low 80 you know mm, uh, okay, okay. 70 70 till 80 so it's, mm-hmm. it's it's not bad at all so we just had our first rain yesterday and then okay. it just started <laughs> freshing you know <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 okay okay yeah, nice nice so, so it's nice, you know, we have a lot of tourists here and then it's, it's a big tourist population here, you know, mm-hmm. and then, yeah, traffic's been really bad, but, you know, Tahoe is nice, Tahoe time, right? Chill, lay back, you know? Yeah. And like Indonesia, it just makes me, it just reminds me a lot of Indonesia, you know? So, okay. I mean, that's, that's great, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, great. good, good, good. <laughs> so don't Jason... ask me about winter, don't ask me about winter. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> in summer right <laughs> is it is it so i'm sure the the weather gets like pretty bad in the winter right it's oh, just like because <laughs> when you went there when you went there at first was it like around around winter time uh so when i went there it's around summer okay okay yeah but but uh our winter started last year started in october mm. and then it ended in may oh yeah and then <laughs> Dude, we have like just one month full of snow. One month oh, full wow. snow keep coming, keep coming, man. You know? <laughs> yeah, and then, I <laughs> actually, I remember this, man. Like my, my pastor back home want, wanted to send me to uh, Minnesota, you okay. know, to study yeah. the Bible. Okay, yeah. And then, and then I told him like, no, I don't want to go to Minnesota. It's too cold, you know. Okay. Man, God is good, man. God is good. Look at where I am. Man. And now, <laughs> now you're in Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Jason, just um, let everybody know, kind of, just introduce yourself a little bit and kind of yeah. give like a little background of you and kind of how you, you know, when you first came to America and stuff. Yeah. So hi everybody, you know, my name is Jason Lyantara and then I was born and raised in Indonesia, moved to Portland, Oregon when I was nine, 18, I was 18. Yeah, I moved to mm-hmm. Portland, Oregon when I was 18, studying the Bible there at Portland Bible College. That's how I met Stanley Chalk here you know, and then that's amazing. I met Stanley and his wife Yoko, they're dear friends of mine and then it's amazing so and then i graduated from pbc there for four years while well, still still living in a dorm you know mm-hmm. for another semester because dorm life is amazing you know yeah. <laughs> i mean i mean dorm life is amazing and you have like always somebody every night you know you talk to right and mm-hmm. then yeah that's amazing and then i went to uh Multnomah university finishing my master's in Christian leadership there for one and a half years. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then job opportunity, opportunity coming in Tahoe, where the lead pastors, they just took over the church like uh, three years ago. And then there are also my campus pastors when they were, when we were in Portland Bible College. So Pastor Alex and Sarah, thank you so much. If you're listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> and, Has it been yeah, already three for- years? Three years, yep. Wow. Three years, yeah. That's weird. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That's amazing. A lot of exciting things in the church. And then that's what I'm currently at right now. I work mm-hmm. for Lake Tahoe Christian Fellowship. Amazing people, amazing communities. So I, I work here. I know my, my job title is kind of long, it's kind of muscle, you know, pastoral administrative administrative assistant so even even every even i can't pronounce that you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay, so yeah. pretty much if you ask me what what i'm doing here i just i'm just doing what pastor alex told me to do you know <laughs> <laughs> pretty much good. here and there yeah it's 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 nice being in the like thing from like a big church in portland coming here mm. you know and then and then God shows me a lot. God teaches me a lot. Like he exposed me to a lot of areas 
in churches here and then in the community also. So yeah, I've been, I'm, I've been doing, uh, I've been leading their youth group, you know, as one of the youth leaders there and I'm mm. leading the young adults. We have Bible school here. I, I, I facilitate, I facilitate uh, the Bible school here. Oh, wow. And, and then I just got a finance job. So pretty much everything, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Do you, are you pretty busy then? You're pretty busy, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. It sounds, it sounds busy. It sounds a lot, but there's season of busyness in every area. So like finance thing is just you're busy in the first and the, and the mid month because mm-hmm. you have to do the bank reconciliation stuff like that. But other than that, it's just like easy things, keeping records, keeping money coming in, coming out. And then, yeah, youth season is getting busy when it's beginning of like uh, sp- uh, spring or beginning of winter, beginning of fall, because we want to plan everything. But yeah. I have like really great, great leaders I'm working with right now. I'm so thankful they make my job easier. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, it's, we have good team, you know. So school good. also like the beginning and the ending is just getting busy, but yeah, I'm so thankful, you know, it's just like different season in life. And then so I can, I'm, I'm easily getting bored. Something, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. easily getting bored. If, if, <laughs> if you wonder, like, my, my neighbors always wonder, like, where are you, Jason? You've never been at home. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm always going somewhere. I'm leaving early at 9, 9 a.m., going to coffee shop, coming back at 10 p.m., you know? So it's always mm. like that, right? If it's not 10 p.m. yet, it's not time to come home yet. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. It's not curfew yet. <laughs> it's not curfew yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Jason, tell me, tell me a little bit about you've been in America for how long has it been? Uh, how long have you been in America? Seven years. Seven, seven years. years. Oh, wow. Yeah, seven years. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about like how, how the culture of Indonesia is maybe a little bit different from America. Was there anything that like when you came to America, you were just shocked by or or did you, you know, did you expect, you know, what America was like already or have you been to America before, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I came to America, it was, it was my first time traveling outside the country without my parents and my family. Oh, wow. When I came to America, I was, I was really young, 18 years old, you know, mm-hmm. and then prior to that, it's like we have this culture, Indonesia culture, that's really family oriented. So your parents taking care of you, you know, even you're 18 years old, like different than America here when uh, parents expect you to uh, to be independent, you know, after you're 18, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then and then Indonesia, like family, family love you so much. If they can help you as far as possible, they would help you. It was when I was 18, you know, and then I left the home to the country that uh, expects like uh, expects maturity, individualism, stuff like that, you know. So it's just mm-hmm. it's just amazing when I came here. Dude, I think you know me really well, Stanley. You know, I learned everything when I was in college. You know, I, I yeah. remember like in the morning <laughs> making breakfast. You know, I don't know how to make <laughs> eggs. You know, it's just. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I know. Great. Yeah, and then yeah. And, and then I asked somebody like, "Hey, I just whispered to somebody he's like, hey, can you can you teach me how to make eggs?'" And they're like, "Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's great." And then I got my first job uh, when I was eighteen at at the cafeteria at TBC. Mm-hmm. You know, they just they just surprised that I don't know how to sweep. Mm. You know, for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and then i thought i i i thought I, i'm the best sweeper ever you know until they told them i i had wrong wrong technique so it was like <laughs> wrong technique, <laughs> wrong technique man. So, yeah yeah okay yeah so, yeah in indonesia like people taking care of me you know and then we live in my family family we have like two housemates you know living mm. with us mm-hmm. and then they're they are helpers to our family, so they live with us, and then uh, we feed them, we give them room. It's like pretty much like another extended fam- family member living with you, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And right. then they they do everything. They do they uh, cleaning, clean the house, making food, mm. refuse places, stuff like that. So yeah, and in America, like I have to learn everything 
from nothing, you know, from zero. Yeah. And yeah, so, and then, but, but I think I found the beauty in it. You know, I found the beauty in it that this is time, you know, this time that I need to uh, get everything together, you know, this time that challenges, I, I don't know, somehow, you know, like I love challenges and then it never, never wear me down, you know, like all the challenges that I have in front of me, just, mm-hmm. just, I, I keep just pursuing like every single challenge in my life and then I'm, I'm growing from that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's why I love math. I don't know, you know, I know you guys are Asian, you know, I just love math. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the challenge that it has, you know, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And then that, that's how it's different. Indonesia is really fam- family oriented. Mm-hmm. And then in America, you pursue in- individualism. And then in Indonesia, we have this term. It's called, uh, I, I don't know how to translate it from English, but it's called sungkan. It means that it it means that if you feel sungkan to people, it means it's, you're is overly being polite to people, overly okay. being polite, right? Okay. And then okay. in, yeah. in in America, like you you just want to be straightforward. You know, yeah. if you don't like something, you say it, right? If, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't yeah. like that person, you say to that person, you know. Mm. And then no drama, no drama. Sometimes like there's a lot of dramas, but in Indonesia, like you keep being nice to them, but but there's like some struggle in your heart that you don't, don't want to do it. You know, you do it because you want to please that person, you know? Mm. So stuff like that. Um, I mean, you can see it from like, here's the, here's the like really vivid example. You know, if you're in a restaurant, you're eating with uh, four people there and then you, you order like uh, a dumpling, you know, that okay. comes with uh, five, uh, five pieces of dumpling, you know, and then you have four people there. And then every every person has like one each for them, one dumpling each for them, and right. then you have like one left over. Right. Right. And yeah. then <laughs> and then if you're Indonesian, is that hang out Indonesians like that dumpling? Nobody's gonna eat that because right. everybody will <laughs> feel like will feel like oh I don't I don't want to hurt somebody's feeling that uh, who wants to eat it you know they don't want to yeah. eat it because you know maybe it's kind of rude stuff like that. But in America, here people are just like I want it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's so true though that's, a, the same, it, it, you know? <laughs> that's the same thing in hawaii like if if we're eating out for the most part if it's the same situation we would you know we would we would take and we would eat we would eat our portion i guess and then mm-hmm. if there's extra i if i was there and there was extra and i saw there was extra and i was like okay i already had some i'm not gonna mm-hmm. touch it or I'll, yeah. or if I will eat it, I'm gonna either wait till like the very last moment, like mm-hmm. maybe every, you know everybody's done, so then oh, okay, I'll, I'll then I'll eat it, or like yeah, um, but it's never like oh you know just <laughs> just take it, <laughs> which is funny because <laughs> like I guess I guess that's the thing about a lot of I feel like a lot of Asian cultures are like that maybe I don't know because mm-hmm. um, even it's it's like that idea of not trying to like you were saying not trying to hurt the other person's feelings or like you mm-hmm. want to you want to appear nice or you want to be nice be mm-hmm. over like you said overly polite um mm-hmm. to uh i guess whoever's whoever you're around your family members or your friends or whatever but yeah it's mm-hmm. a lot of like beating around the bush yeah and it's, it's not like straightforward like america or you know yeah yeah that's yeah yeah that's i mean i i I agree with that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, and then the last thing I can I I can see really, uh, really clear here is like America is, like Indonesia we love hierarchy. We we respect to hierarchy, you know, mm. and then there's that rigid hierarchy for certain things, you know. But I mean, if <clears throat> like even having a relationship with uh, your boss, you know. I think I'm kind of surprised here that Pastor Alex like really, really uh, treats me as his friend. Mm. When in Indonesia, <laughs> it, <laughs> right? in Indonesia, like I want to make sure, like I said, like Mister Hernandez yeah. and stuff like that, you know, yeah. boss, or even like somebody that older, like one year older than me, you know, I still, I it's it's so rude if I just call them by their name, right? Right. right. 
there's some uh something respectful you know like to say before you call that person's name you know mm-hmm. even to your dad it's your parents you know it's it's so rude if you call your parents uh with uh you or stuff like that yeah you know? like yeah it's, yeah it's yeah really rude right you do this you do that no you don't you don't call <laughs> yeah, your parents no, no. You, right? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay yeah so the very but, this, this hierarch this hierarchical kind of like system of like it's uh i guess respect right there's this respect, respect. That, mm-hmm. that comes with it like you know your boss your parents your auntie your uncles what you know whatever your mm-hmm. the way you mm-hmm. address them is like you respect them because they're older mm-hmm. you know yep. and, mm-hmm. yeah 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 okay yeah 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 stuff like that and then and then how i how i cope with that with those things or just i just try to blend them and then to produce some to offer something new from the way it's not just like i'm leaning towards like american culture or indonesian culture stuff like that but i think it's about the kingdom culture right what yeah. what the bible say it is you know mm-hmm. so if you have dispute with somebody else try to be straightforward you know so they'll let so so they know that there's something going on you know and then right. drama is not good because drama is going to explode some days right and right. then stuff like that. So I'm looking for a biblical perspective in it, you know, what the Bible says, because we're living in in a in a kingdom culture here, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm, in, mm-hmm. in a kingdom culture, it's not American culture or Indonesian culture. But man, I'm I'm so blessed, you know, with living in like <clears throat> two different countries, you know, I, I hope like I hope everybody here has that opportunity to just like go out a little bit and then just just hang out with different people, right? Different places and mm-hmm. then and then just get yourself in that. Just just put yourself uh, to everybody, you know, and expose yourself to new culture and stuff like that. And then it helps you to kind of open your mind, you know, and yeah, yeah. See, different, see people differently, right? right? Right, right. Did you did you feel like you? So let's say if you had an option, right, to stay in Indonesia and mm-hmm. to stay, obviously, to to go to come to America. Do you feel mm-hmm. like you've grown, you know, you feel do you feel like the amount that you've grown is much greater because you came to America? I don't know if that makes sense, any sense. Um Oh. Yeah. Definitely, man. Def- yeah. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I I think when last time I went back to Indonesia, mm. I I might not see the difference in myself because, you know, you're you're, you're like with yourself in the water right in the, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. uh-huh. with myself but <clears throat> what people tell me like i think they told me that i offer something different mm. you know well, yeah from from the way i carry myself the way i talk to people you know i'm like in indonesia like it i like they asked me to speak in the, the small groups when you have to speak in front of older people and mm. then if you're indonesian you might be like really nervous because they are like older people that you have right. to respect that they're supposed to be the one who pour that pour, pour into you you know mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. right now in this time you have to share something but i just i just feel that i have like something different to offer you know something different yeah. to offer and then yeah it just it just enhanced like I kind of challenge my friends a little bit to think a little bit different mm-hmm. with uh, the way they they were, they were raised and stuff like that. Even my parents, you know, sometimes when they say something, I'm not I'm not trying to be disrespectful to be to my parents, but I'm trying to think through it, you know, after living in in both countries, right? So right, um, yeah, I think I think that's amazing. That's amazing, yeah. you know, and and then yeah, so. Yeah, that's yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. just the idea of like you coming to a new another country and then mm-hmm. people noticing, noticing that like, oh wow, there's something different about Jason. Mm-hmm. He's he almost like gives give. There's he gives off something different. Like he's offering, he's mm-hmm. giving something different, and mm-hmm. obviously that comes with well, one your relationship that you had with God, right? relationship mm-hmm. that you've built and you continue to pursue and you continue to um maintain and then also just like the 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 amount of experiences you've had in america 
and being, you know, not only just staying in Indonesia when, yes, you mm-hmm. could have grown a lot in just if you stayed in Indonesia, but it would just be different. You wouldn't have mm-hmm. the perspective that you have now, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, he, it helps you also with, the, yeah, like what you said, relationship with God. I think mm-hmm. that's the primary area that I'm growing more in my yeah. journey you know, as, as I live in America. Because back home, you know, I see I my Christianity is dependent on my, my family's faith, right? And then what mm-hmm. God has done through them. And then yeah. right now you're you're going to a new country, and then you don't have family members with you. You don't know you don't know right. anybody. Right. And then this is the time for you actually to find that relationship with God personally for for myself for for mm-hmm. me. You know, like I don't want to be dependent on God. I know there's like some rough seasons, you know, because when when you when you were young, you know, and then you go to country that nobody can see you. You know, you can just do whatever you want to be, whatever you would like to be, you know. Right. And then, and then you work right now. You have money, you know. You, you, I, I'm not dependent anymore with my family, or just like mm-hmm. dependent on Chinese New Year, you know. So like yeah. that because that's <laughs> the only time you get yeah. money. You know? right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, <clears throat> so it, it's just amazing, you know. To just, I made some bad decisions, you know, but I learned from that, and then that's how I grow in my. A journey with God, my relationship with God, and then Stanley. That I think that's my uh, cornerstone, you know, to my to my life right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, relationship awesome. with God. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. So, what's the what's the what do you feel like the differences? Or just tell me tell me the differences that you notice, I guess, about the church and the religion within Indonesia and then within America, or I guess you know what you were living in and what it is, what you're living in now. Yeah. So in America, it's interesting because America was built on the Christian foundation, not necessarily like the the founding fathers were Christians, but you know the value of the Bible so much. And then you talk with everybody about Jesus and then they know Jesus. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. It's either like how they practice it right now. It's like, they're a practitioner Christian or not, you know, but most of them you say like, oh yeah, I'm Christian, you know. I <laughs> yeah, I go to church, I don't go to church, I used to go to church, you know, and mm-hmm. my parents go to church, so that's easy to say. And then pretty much uh in Christianity is here may not seem like it anymore, but it's like uh it's a dominant culture in here, mm-hmm. you know. Whereas mm-hmm. in Indonesia, like in, even though Indonesia is not a Muslim country, we have a we have the biggest Muslim population in the world, mm, and then yeah. but the things like Indonesia recognizes six religions, and then yeah. you you freely uh, practice your religion, and then and then it's supported by the government, but the practice of it is is really different. And in 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 the just past like ten years, right now Indonesia tried to try to advertise that uh, religious freedom. You can use your own religious religion, mm. stuff like that. But before that, it's just built on the Islamic foundation. You know, Islamic culture is really, really strong here. I mean, yeah. in 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 my hometown, my home in Indonesia, you're surrounded by like five mosques, stuff like that. You know, mm. five mm-hmm. uh, Islamic prayers. And then every morning, there's your alarm right there. You know, they just yeah. pray. Right, and then it's time for you to wake up. So that's it, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then they <clears throat> they they pause any TV programs during their prayer time. You know, mm. that's how strong the Islamic culture is back in, in Indonesia. And then sharing about Jesus is 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 difficult. If some areas, if you're caught uh, converting Muslim to Christianity, you might be subject to uh to a penalty or a judgment like that it's it's not by the government it's not it's not imposed by the government but it's imposed by the society you know mm-hmm. the majority of society right and then if you're a convert from muslim to is muslim to christianity and then it could it would be a disgrace for you and then your family might disown you right and that's how strong the the 
the culture there, the Islamic culture there, and then some of the areas in Indonesia they still have this Sharia law, and then they're governed by the is- Islamic law. Mm-hmm. So sharing about Jesus in Indonesia, you have to be more creative than what yeah. you have in America, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I, I just, I just went to evangelize last time, you know, with Campus Crusades here in, in Lake Tahoe. And then it's just so nice, you know, you can just like thinking about it, not debating, you know, like you can discuss about the differences between religions, mm-hmm. like no hatred there. In Indonesia, once you mention Jesus, people are like, whoa. Yeah, you know, it's like something more serious. Right now. Is, yeah. are, are you trying to convert me right now to Christianity, right. stuff like that? Mm-hmm. So the way I, we evangelize, in Indonesia is first and foremost we 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 fulfill their immediate needs first. Mm. So mm-hmm. if if they need clothing we, we give them clothing. Uh we, if they need food we give them food. So there's immediate needs that they need, you know, and then and then after that if they're getting interested in it they keep coming and then I hope when we give them something, we donate something, they feel the love of God, you know, right. which is, that's something that Christianity offers that I cannot see any other religion offer to anybody, it's like the love of God, you know, despite mm-hmm. of you being something else, despite of you doing something else that's contradicts to the Bible, we're still mm-hmm. loving you. And then mm-hmm. that, that's, that's the beauty of Christianity, right? Loving mm-hmm. people. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, I mean, it's not just only being practiced to Indonesian people right now, but everybody needs the, the love of God. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. And yeah. then even in the Bible, you know, before the miracle happens, like Jesus always fulfills their immediate needs first, you know, mm, right? Yeah, and yeah. then, so yeah, that's, that's uh, a little bit tricky. I know like uh, you had that also opportunity to evangelize in Portland, Oregon, right? I think probably with, back then tbc you know and then mm-hmm. i i kind of feel the difference like wow i can i can i can speak the name of jesus everywhere here you know with, yeah right yeah so, yeah there's so there there's almost like more of a freedom to mm-hmm. do that kind of stuff in america yeah. which is indonesia right yeah and then big thing also while you don't see a lot of persecution happens uh towards christianity in indonesia it still happens in the in some some small towns, you know, mm. and then yeah, and then it's so sad to see like when it comes to Christmas, you know, like it's awesome, right? Awesome, right now we have a really good president, and then this this president really uh, imposed uh, really religious freedom, religious safety to everybody, you know, and then he orders our military to just guard up the churches, you know, because. Most of mm. us suffer terrorism attacks during that, uh, yeah. during during Christmas, and then yeah. you know it 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 it's just like that. You know, there's a, there's a cost that we need to pay when we become a Christian sometimes in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. You know, and then yeah. yeah, I think that's man. Like if if I when I told you about this, like I told you, not with uh, not not real not with like discouraging faith, but like it's really encouraging for me to share this with you, man. The numbers has grown, you know, and uh, has has grown. I mean, I mean, last uh, seven years ago when I checked Wikipedia, you know, I know it's not an untrusted source, but you know, it's just why not, (laughs) right? It appeared the first time there, you know? (laughs) Uh know, The Christianity in Indonesia was like 6% back then, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's, it grew to ten percent. Oh wow! You know when yeah. when we see ten percent of two two hundred seventy seven million people, we're talking here about like twenty seven point seven mil seven million Christians in Indonesia, yeah. and then yeah. it's putting like the country to the second largest Christian population in Southeast Asia, like under yeah. the Philippines, you right. know, and then the, the number ten in the world, you know. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. That's amazing, like how. God works through all yeah. these like circumstances, stuff like that. So yeah, it's amazing, man. I'm so excited for Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome that that God's really moving. And that's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's all what seven, 
seven seven years since the last time you checked it, right? Seven almost, years, almost doubled yeah. in percentage. Yeah, That's I told cool. you if you're if you're a Christian right now and then you're so discouraged <clears throat> about like what happens right now among you, you know, like you cannot see Christ in in your society. Please check out Wikipedia Indonesia is right there. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. and you feel you feel encouraged. You feel encouraged, man, with what you're doing, and then keep yeah. pursuing your faith. You know, and then God doing amazing through you, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Indonesia's. <laughs> I've never been to Indonesia, and you're from what part of Indonesia? So it's called Surabaya. It's second largest Surabaya. city in yeah after Jakarta. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so. Since coming from there, did you, I know you kind of talked about it, um, about like, almost like putting together the two, the two cultures. Is that kind Mm -hmm. of, is that kind of how you see it? You see, like, how have you adapted, I guess, American culture Mm -hmm. um, from, you know, as a, not only just from being from um, Indonesia, but also being just an international in general. Because you've also, you've, you've also like. I know you traveled all over the place. You've probably been to a bunch of places, right? You've been to a lot of places. Dude, I love, I love traveling. I know man. you love traveling. Don't, don't get me started. Don't get me started. You know? <laughs> this guy. So J- when Jason, when we were in school, I just remember him going. I remember you going everywhere. Like you're going here, you're going there. You're you're on the other side of the states. You're over here in this country. I was like, what? Where? How's this guy going? All these places. It's crazy. But Jason, Jason loves traveling. And tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about about like. I guess, like, how did you kind of like put those two cultures together? You know, being obviously Indonesia is completely different from America, but at mm-hmm. the same time, like, as you as an international. Yeah. So, um, it's it's different in the in the first years when I came to America. I'm trying to fit in. You know, I'm trying to fit <laughs> in with the culture, right? Yep. And yep. then, and then having a American roommate is really was really helping me a lot you know with some mm. idioms you guys have which just doesn't make sense some of them don't make sense you know like some sort of baby art with the bath water you know it's just like that right <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's funny in the same way but yeah and and then right now i mean the point that i'm not trying to fit in at all because when i figured that when i try to fit in it means that <clears throat> i don't rely anymore in god i i really want to pleasure people you know when mm. i try to fit in when i figure out that i'm good where i am right now it means that i'm walking in what god has called me to be or god has met me to become you know yeah. and then the scripture all, all tells you that every person is unique created uniquely mm. and then mm-hmm. that's why and then being international you know like it means that you have that uniqueness, you know. You have right, that yeah, right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Don't don't become somebody that uh, you don't want to be just because the society wants you to become like that. You become a boring person if you mm, yeah. if you become like that. You know, just walk in confidence in what God has cre- created you to be, and then you become that person who walks in God. Joyfully, man. We're talking about joy here. And then not so many people feel this joy. You can feel happy and then later on you get sad, right? But Mm -hmm. joy, we're talking about this constant joy. Like no matter what you're happy or sad, you feel that joy. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. and then that joy has to come from the Lord. So so that's why I figure out, you know, like uniqueness. I know you can hear, you know, if you're listening right now with your headset i have an accent thick accent you know i'm still trying to minimize it a little bit little, little by little i'm making progress here mm-hmm. but i don't know i think it's it's never gone it's never gone you know <laughs> but, <clears throat> but but it's amazing you know like uh when you when you uh grow in your uniqueness you offer something different in people and then also in different the way they see you and then that's why I love people, man. That's why I like I love traveling. When I travel, every time I meet different people, different mm-hmm. kind of people, you know? Like you yeah. can learn from people's mistakes, you can learn from people's success, you know? So 
that's that's unique. You know, I'm 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 into Houston when I like to travel with bus. You know, it's just like talking with some stranger stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then and then that's amazing. You know, like you're I know I'm the minority there in Houston. You know, but but I feel I feel the love. You know, I mm. feel the love from people, and then it just it's just amazing. Like be that's why I told you I hang out with different people, and then there, and then you 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 will be surprised. You will be surprised, right? Mm-hmm. And then yeah, that uniqueness and that just expose it more. You know, your unique uniqueness. It means that first thing you need to know yourself. You need to know your identity, you know, so you can walk in confidence. Right? Mm. If you don't know yourself first, it's so hard for you to be confident. And then, pretty much, confidence the one that bring me until right now. That just keeps me pursuing new things, learning new things, you know. And then, just putting yourself out there, like opportunity keeps coming, you know, if you're being confident. And yeah. then. I know, like if you're if you're in the wrong position right now, you don't want to be confident if you're living in a scene, right? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. To that. So yeah, don't yeah, keep being humble, you know, in mm-hmm. your confidence, right? Good. No, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um what's one of the biggest things that you struggled with when coming to America? Mm. Um, yeah do you do you have like something that you struggled with that was like oh this was really hard this was really tough um maybe it caused uh fear anxiety caused something like that is there is there anything that you can say or is there anything that that um what's one of the biggest things that you've you feel like you've struggled with that you've overcome i guess Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, um Pretty much, uh, feeling of loneliness, mm. you know, because once again, you know, I was I was in when I was in college, I stayed in a dorm, and then you're surrounded by hundreds of people that have the same mindset, God loving people, mm-hmm. you know, and then they're available, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you move out from college, it just right now you have your own apartment, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Life can be really lonely and then especially for you you're you're working in some some type of ministry you know it just it's just something that feeling of loneliness it just keeps coming you know you feel that you're doing this by yourself right but the things like that that always reminds reminds me to me just you're not lonely you know you're not lonely yeah. lonely is a feeling when this way to put it you know you're you're seeking to somebody, to people, of a fear that you cannot get from, that you cannot get from God, right? Mm-hmm. If you fear that God cannot give you that, that thing that you wanted, you ask that to other people. That's why mm-hmm. you feel that loneliness. You know, maybe you feel you have friends to talk to. You know, maybe because you don't have that relationship with God. If if God is your source of joy. You wouldn't ask it to anybody else because you have mm-hmm. the source of joy in God. Right. That's right. why. Uh, that's why that God really always reminds me to me. And then also, God tell me actually pretty much like, hey, Jason, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that strikes me a lot, you know, because in PBC, like I always have somebody, you know, like want to hang out with, try to. Uh, distract myself probably like with God wants me to work in so like God reminds me like hey Jason grow up it may be this time in your life that you want to do, do you want to learn something new or you want to just build your talent that I already gave to you you know yeah, yeah. in your in your time alone right like what mm-hmm. you're doing here you know like planning broadcast everything that appears here you know you did a lot in your time alone Right, mm-hmm, family. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. like it's not just all happening here. Like what you hear in a podcast or like YouTube video here, you know. But you plan that in yeah. your time alone, you right. know. So that's mm-hmm. that's what God tells me. Like, hey, Jason, uh, if you you're called to minister to be in the ministry, just study more, you know, making mm-hmm. more sermons and then listening more, studying more, and then connecting with different people, stuff like reading more books. So I think that's 
the way God tells me to grow up, to be mature, mm-hmm. you know, like, and then <laughs> last is not always like with somebody always happy, stuff like that. But there's a time that you need to focus on yourself mm-hmm. and then the relationship with God. Like that's a lot of things that you sacrifice if you hang out with people, you know. So God also tells me like, hey, be intentional with the, with people that you want to hang out with and then to set the boundary right yeah. and then to cut yeah. your cut yourself mm-hmm. from the enemies you know so like yeah I'm, i'm glad that i learned that even though i'm a little bit i was a little bit older that back then it was like 20 22 mm-hmm. you know when i when i felt that and then yeah just being faithful in just recognize the talents and then that you have expand it what kind of advice would you tell somebody that is coming to america for the first time doesn't know anything about america doesn't know the culture the religion doesn't know people doesn't know anything about it um but what kind of advice would you give that person just keep showing up just keep showing up you know yeah. don't hide yourself don't even stuck with your personality don't don't have that mind at the stone you know like don't have that um stubborn heart you know that mm. i'm the person i am No, you know, you, it's just a lot of things that God wants to show to you, you know, about the culture here. And I know, like, living to the fullest in America is kind of a bit tricky, you know, what kind of full fulfillment, like fullness that you're talking about here, you know. If you, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things. America offers everything, mm-hmm. right? And then mm-hmm. you need to know, you need to know what you want to pick and what, what life do you want to have here, you know. And then, Because in Indonesia, like there's there's a lot of things that is not available. Like the government protects you with certain things, you know, like drugs, pornography, stuff mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You cannot, you don't have access to it. It's so hard. Mm-hmm. Like in here, is everything is accessible, mm-hmm. and it might sound fun in the beginning, you know, but but that's not the way that God wants you to live life in the in the fullest, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just. Keep showing up. The first one is big, you know, any meeting, right? I know like first meeting, small group is awkward, always yeah. awkward. <laughs> yeah. you, you, never, you never expect like coming to a new community, not being awkward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just break mm-hmm. the boundaries, you know, I've, like people always tell me like when you have conversation with, with somebody for the first time, there's a tendency for you to keep talking, you know, mm. to keep entertaining that person, right? Sure, if yeah. If you're, if I've been I've been a lot in a car ride with somebody, just somebody with me. And then like, I'll always, I, I fear the silence, you know, I, I always fear the silence, you know, yeah. like yeah. what I'm <laughs> yeah. talking about. But, but that really relationship will become fruitful after that silence, mm. you know, after you recognize that after that pause, you know, you, you, you become to get to know more of that person, that community, mm-hmm. and then what's in their heart. And then, Yeah, keep showing up and then keep being interested in people, you know, mm-hmm. because because you learn a lot from people. And then pretty much like you have to have healthy boundaries after that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you want you want to speak in in why why you are here. You you want to know like why why you come to America, what you want to establish here, you know, and, and then walk in that walk in that way, you know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one okay, one last one last question mm-hmm. before we close out. So, if you could tell young Jason something one one piece of advice, just one piece of advice, um mm-hmm. what would that piece of advice be? So like he hasn't come to America yet. He hasn't mm-hmm. he's not who he he's not you right now. What would you mm-hmm. tell J- what would you tell younger Jason, 18-year-old, 17-year-old Jason? What would you tell them? What would be one piece of advice you would give him? Wow. Just one piece, man. Um, wow. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a, before it's a good question. coming before before coming to America, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then in preparation to your journey, journey to America, you said? Sure, yeah. I mean, on, honestly, it could be anything. Just like knowing what you know now, knowing all the you know the seven years that you've been in america um mm-hmm. 
you've learned so many things, you've gone through so many things, you've struggled with so many things, you've had a lot of wins, a lot of losses. Mm -hmm. What's just a piece of advice that you would, one piece of advice you could give younger Jason that may help him in the future or that you, that you would just want to tell him anything. Mm -hmm. could be anything. Mm -hmm. could be anything. So mm -hmm. what helps me the most is just keep being curious, keep mm -hmm. being curious. Curi cu that curiosity will, will expose you to so many things. And then that's exciting when you, when you receive that with open heart, with joy and glad that comes from the Lord, you know, it's just amazing to see like how it's going to lead you, right? Just being curious. I know uh, people might say that, hey, just listen to God's voice, you know, but also for me, like I want to tell you that have that desire in your heart, you know, that desire to to move forward, to plan ahead, you know, like as long as your heart in the right position, right? If God, if God tells you to redirect, that direction, at least it's not going to be hard for God to redirect you. At least you're doing your best in in whatever you're doing, you're doing right now. And then just keep being present. I think mm -hmm. that's pretty much being curious and then stay present. Don't yeah. don't think about what, what the future might be. I know I say like have a plan, stuff like that. Just Just living day by day, you know, like what you have right now, in, what in front of you right now. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you right now uh, you have your in Indonesia, you know, in high school, maybe you have your national exam after this. Maybe, maybe even, even like uh, your preparation to something, right? And mm -hmm. then maybe right now you're with your family. Just mm -hmm. keep being present, loving those people. Keep pers keep pursuing what you what what talent you have or that curiosity kept keep fuel that curiosity and then you're gonna be you're gonna be like surprised with what comes next. Like for this summer man, I'm 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 always I'm always curious about how to play golf, you know. <laughs> and then and then I have to be honest with other people. Like I know somebody playing golf and then ask them like, Hey, can you teach me how to play golf? And then that mm -hmm. person turns to be my golf coach here and then I've been <laughs> yeah. I've been going to driving range driving range almost every day and if you if you if you guys play golf here you know I think that's the hardest sport that you ever play I know I play a lot of sports soccer tennis I even even until pickleball you know <laughs> but I know, yeah pickleball football is <laughs> fun but golf man golf is like it's hard that frustrates me the yeah. first week, the first week I went to driving range. I've been, I went like almost every day, hitting <laughs> almost like a hundred balls every day, yeah. and then I still couldn't hit, couldn't hit anything. You, <laughs> you, you would get, you would get like some good swing, but it just like once after like thirty balls, stuff like yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I asked God, like God, is it? You want me to quit from golf? <laughs> yeah, is this is, right? what, is this my calling then, or not? <laughs> yeah, and then and then, but the thing is, like, I keep pursuing that. I keep mm. I keep uh persevering that, you know. And then and then, if I look back right now with my golf skills, I feel like, man, God, so thankful that I keep doing this. I keep pursuing yeah. this, you know. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of areas right now that you you might you might feel in your heart, you know, like. You're starting a new job, you're starting new school, and then you're starting something new, and then you're in the progress that you feel you're in the mundane area, and then you feel like you want to quit. Mm -hmm. Before quitting, just give your best in it. You'll mm -hmm. be surprised, right? And yeah. then, yeah, I mean, if you're not good in five years, maybe that you need to quit, but something like that. But... <laughs> yeah, you, you still have to be honest with yourself. <laughs> yeah, you have to be. You have to be honest with yourself sometimes. You know, like just. Uh, but yeah, keep pursuing something. Like, yeah, I've, there's a lot of things that I did this summer, Stanley. You know, like something new. Like I'll always try to do something new, and yeah, then I'll be awesome. surprised if you if you put effort in it, if you put time in it. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people say that if like pro athletes, they put like 10,000 hours, you know, yeah. so they can master their, mm -hmm. their things, right? 
and mm. then they have process there and only only a professional player they go through that season they keep practicing even you don't feel like it yeah. right only yeah. those people who can make it they have to experience something like that you know they have experience mm. things that you don't even want to do it because you don't feel like it mm. no matter what you know you feel like it or not right. you keep practicing and doing the things you, if you're if you're in a ministry right now keep keep doing that you know keep making like little sermon for you trying to have to build your communication skills you know you might not see the results in like one month two months three, six months but it might come like later on one year right and then when you look back you feel thankful that you did that yeah right that's awesome mm-hmm. well jason thank you for sharing thank you so much is there is there anything else that you want to say before we close out is there anything you wanted to i don't know if you had anything else to say and if not it's okay but i just wanted to give you give you another chance to just say whatever that you wanted to say or if you had like an encouraging word to um just tell the people that are listening um something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just keep listening to stanley's podcast (laughs) Constant pursuit. Everybody needs to listen. Constant <laughs> Thank pursuit. You. It's been amazing. It's been a blessing for me. Like uh, listening to a couple of episodes and then Stanley. Look at that. If you can see, if you can open your YouTube, or it's gonna be uploaded on YouTube or something. Like mm-hmm. Yeah, so it'll be on yeah, YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, YouTube and then podcast, right? And yep, and it'll be a Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of all of the pretty much most of the oh uh, everywhere audio. You know? yeah it's all it's everywhere. all over the you place you cannot find it where you at right uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then you can see this smile from stanley that's amazing i've been i've been looking stanley says the whole time here i'm trying to forget my face here you know <laughs> it's amazing it's so encouraging right oh, Jason, I, yeah i mean i love you stanley i Thank miss you, so you and you too. yeah you know, keep praying for you and then yeah keep doing what you're doing man that's amazing yeah no thank you um jason give us uh tell us where we can i don't care i don't know if you care to share like where uh if you're on like any social media but do you have any social media that people can find you at or um, anywhere that people can find you or even maybe the church you're going to and maybe people can stop stop by at that church all of those things yeah mm-hmm. please yeah so my social media is jason Nayantara. Mm-hmm. uh that's what it appears right now on the screen just my entire <laughs> you'll find it you know it's easy to find i think um, my name is pretty unique you can find it there right away right but if you're traveling and then uh to san francisco or reno please stop by at like yeah. house at like the house amazing beautiful lake and then if you get a chance to stop by south lake tahoe please go to lake tahoe christian fellowship i want to connect with you and then and uh, I want to connect with you and then get to know you better. And then please say hi. Please say hi. You you'll see me there, and then we can chat. You know, we can talk. And stuff. So yeah, just stop by, and then maybe there will be a coffee in the church. Maybe. I don't maybe. Know, you know, <laughs> yeah. Sunday, right? Yeah. Pay for coffee, and yeah. then <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I hope I can see you guys. That's awesome. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much for just taking the time to talk and um, yeah, there's, you, you said a lot of good things, just being, mm-hmm. being curious, being present mm-hmm. and honestly, like just continuing to what I, what I got from today's episode is, is just being continued to seek God. I think mm-hmm. that's, that's the big thing. Be honest with yourself and, you know, see, and seek a, an, a true and honest relationship with God and, I think that's mm-hmm. honestly all that uh, God can ask for, and He wants He wants honest He wants honesty from us, and I and I believe that if we continue, and from what all all of the things that you said, if we just continue to seek honestly and continue to be mm-hmm. curious and be present with not only the people in our lives and the things that we're doing in our life, but being present with God mm-hmm. and living a kingdom life and having a kingdom mindset that's i think yeah. that's where it's all at but no thank you so much jason honestly yeah. thanks for taking the time and doing this podcast and uh, thank you for having me stanley 
Thank you so much for listening to the Constant Pursuit Podcast. If you guys like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys want to check out more of what Jason's doing, make sure to go check him out. And his socials down below in the description. Make sure to comment your favorite part about this podcast or future episodes that you want to see. And if you want to get the audio version as soon as possible, make sure to go check out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.